Hi everybody. This is uh, Art Moorhead uh, again um, with Art Faux Designs and Painting. And this is a little bit different than regular faux finishing. Um, I am basically uh, I've been in the business 30 years of the painting business. And this here is these are mahogany doors. And what I've done is I've stripped these doors. They were a real mess. And what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to stain these doors to bring them back to their natural color. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do all these panels, how to do it the correct way. So if you ever are wanting to do your own work, you'll be able to do this on your own and not have to pay uh, two or three thousand dollars to have your doors done. You can do this yourself. It's really quite easy. It's not a complicated process. It's just knowing the right way to do it. Um, now these doors, they were a real mess. And I went ahead and I stripped them and sanded them, prepped them out. Um, if you do have doors like that, I recommend a stripper. It's called Dad's. And you can get it at uh, your hardware stores, Home Depot, whatever. And the key thing to this is prep. Prep is everything when it comes to doing stain work. You want to make sure you get your doors nice and clean and using a stripper is, is kind of kind of nasty so you may want to hire someone to do that but you can take care of the rest but when you sand your doors you start out with a 120 grade sandpaper and you sand with the grain don't sand across the grain you want to sand with it then after you get your uh, <clears throat> your doors all sanded with the 120 you want to come back again and sand it again with a 150 or maybe a 160 to kind of even out that, that sanding. Um, the important thing is that you want to make sure that you don't go across the grain because if you go across the grain that will show up in your, uh, your stain work. Now I'm in Florida, Naples, Florida and there's a product out there that I use that I recommend. Um, and it's called Sickens, that's uh, S-I-K-K-N-S. Tape, tape around the perimeter, and and that way it's going to you know, gonna keep it off the glass. I mean, if you get a little bit on the glass, that's all right. A little bit of mineral spirits will take it off. And you can see I, I taped it all off before I even stripped it. And the stripping process is, you know, it, it's caustic. It'll burn you. You need to wear rubber gloves and goggles and that's a whole different process and I really didn't want to get in, into that. That's a whole nother video and you know it's it, it I would recommend you have someone do it if your doors are that bad. What happened here was somebody had came in an inexperienced uh, faux painter had come in and tried to wood grain these doors and it was uh, it, it was not a good job and what the owners were wanting to do was to um, try and fix them and wood grain them again and I just told them that they were just too far gone that uh, we really needed to strip them and just bring it back to its natural wood and to me uh, when they when you got that kind of money wrapped up in mahogany you know I think that's just the right way to do things so I'll, uh, uh, I'll show you what the and the stain is here. You, know, you don't spray it, you don't uh, roll it. And the thing with stains and urethanes is you don't want to shake them because what that does is it uh, puts air in it and you end up getting uh, air bubbles in it. So what you, what you do is you open it up and you stir it to uh, get your color mixed up in there. And I use an ox hair brush. An ox hair brush is an expensive brush but you're going to get a, the best finish you know, with that. You're going to have a um, uh, quality finish, whereas if you just use a regular nylon brush, it holds a lot more material, and it's just a lot easier to, uh, uh, to work with. Usually, I use a 3-inch brush. You can use any size you want. And yeah, it's, it's mixed up pretty good. It's kind of a dark color. Which is, you know, which is okay, but see these doors, these doors have been stripped, and there is going to be some imperfections. I could just clear coat them, but I want, I want some color in them because it's going to, 
uh, it's going to mask you know any of the uh, little water stains or things that are in there and you don't need a whole lot in here if you put too much in there it starts to dry out on you and then it starts becoming hard to work this particular product they don't recommend thinning it but if it does have a tendency to kind of drag on you a little bit you know you can add a little bit of mineral spirits to it but it's not recommended to do that it's a real easy product to use you just make sure that you don't get any drag marks and you know build up dark marks and uh, that kind of thing now in my painting video I showed I showed everybody how to hold a paint bucket now when you're working with stains and oil base you don't want to get that stuff all over you because it does become quite a quite a mess and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you again how to hold this bucket without getting any product on you. It's pretty simple. It's an old painter taught me this years ago. And what you do is you take your index finger here and you put it here. And you hold your bucket like this. So that way when you're holding it, you just tilt your hand. See how that is? And when you dip your brush in there, your knuckles and your hands not in the way you know so it just makes it a lot cleaner to do you know and it's just one of those little tricks that just makes the job so much easier now, the trick to this trick to the staining is again I remember in my other video my painting video I showed you how to um, tap on the sides of the brush rather than wipe it on both sides you don't have enough material on your brush, how can you how can you get anything done? So all I do is I got I probably got about that much color in the bottom of my bucket. You don't need no more than that. And I just put some on my brush. And what you what you want to do is you want to do your cut first. You want to do your smaller areas first and then do your flat second because if you do this area first and you do this second, what's going to happen is when you brush this out, your bristles are going to go over top of it and it's going to mess it up. So you do all your cut first and then you face it off. I cut it in nice and clean. See that? I don't want the excess over top of that because it's going to give me problems. I'm going to go over, I'm going to go around the whole door and do my cut first. And that's, that's the way you want it. Now, my ox hair is holding a lot of stain, so I am going to have to wipe a little bit off of there because it's just too much on my brush but then see I got all this color on the side of my bucket and I'll probably get my hand into it 